right, guys, so we just got done talking to Mother Giselle. We'll be talking to her more later on. But let's go to Josephine here. The Inquisition cannot remain, Ambassador. If she can't prove it was founded on Justinia's orders. This is an inopportune time, Marquis. More of the faithful flock here each day. But allow me to introduce you to the brave soul who risked her life to slow the magic of the bridge. Mistress Lavelan, this is the Marquis Durellion, one of Divine Justinia's greatest supporters. And the rightful owner of Haven. House Durellion lent Justinia these lands for pilgrimage. This Inquisition is not a beneficiary of this arrangement. This is the first I've heard of Haven having an owner outside the Chantry. My wife. Lady Machin of Denner, as claimed to Haven by ancient treaty with the monarchs of Ferelden. We were honored to lend its use to divine Justinia. She is a... She was a woman of supreme merit. I will not let an upstart order remain on her holy grounds. People have been injured. You can't just turn them out onto the snow. And who benefits if they stay? Divine Justinia, Marquis. The Inquisition, not the Chantry, is sheltering the pilgrims who mourn her. Why is the Chantry ignoring the faithful? Because it remains in shock. <sighs> we face a dark time, Your Grace. Divine Justinia would not want her passing to divide us. She would, in fact, trust us to forge new alliances to the benefit of all, no matter how strange they might seem. I'll think on it, Lady Montillier. The Inquisition might stay in the meanwhile. Do the Durellions actually have a claim on this place? His Grace's position is not so strong as he presents it. Despite their Ferelden relations, the Durellions are Orlesian. If the Marquis wishes to claim Haven, Empress Selene must negotiate with the Ferelden on his behalf. Her current concerns are a bit larger than minor property disputes. I'm so pleased the Marquis isn't tossing us out into the cold. His Grace is only the first of many dignitaries we must contend with. You expect more people in Haven? Undoubtedly. And each visitor will spread the story of the Inquisition after they depart. An ambassador should ensure the tale is as complimentary as possible. May I ask, what brought you to work for the Inquisition? Sister Leliana approached me. We've been acquainted for quite some time. For better or worse, being the Inquisition's diplomat has become as interesting as she promised. What sort of dealings have you had with nobility? For some years, I was the royally appointed court ambassador from Antiva to Orle. The nobility of Thedas is a rather singular sphere. Those I'm not acquainted with, I know through reputation. The Inquisition is lucky to have you as an advocate, Lady Montillier. Thank you. Let us hope so. <laughs> Thedas's politics have become agitated as of late. I hope to guide us down smoother paths. But please excuse me. I've much work to do before the day is done. <laughs> I love Josephine. Love Josephine. Okay, Maneve, let's talk to you. You're the Herald. Or, well, the one they're calling the Herald, anyway. I hope the Inquisition can restore order soon. I never really wanted to leave the Circle. My name is Maneve. I research demons and other creatures. Seeker, Pentagast, and I use what I find to help the soldiers fight them. Mm. You said you were a mage? No, just an apprentice. I was never very good at magic. I've got just enough talent to be a danger to other people. But when the mages rebelled, people like me had nowhere to go. The Templars would have killed us. Luckily, Seeker Pentagast took me in. Along with the Tranquil, I was protecting. I'm surprised that even an apprentice mage wouldn't join the rebellion. I don't like using magic to fight. I'm not good at it either. I liked studying. I liked performing rituals that helped us unlock the secrets of the Vale. I liked having the Templars around to keep us safe. Now, most of the time I go for this, but 
I don't want to make her angry. Most certain <laughs> mages I've met have a different opinion of the Templars. They have not lived my life. I was born into a Dalish clan. I lived there until my magic manifested. The Dalish cannot risk having too many mages in one clan. And I was one more than they could bear. But they gave me a pack and sent me into the woods to find my own life. I was seven years old. My clan never did that. We sent those gifted with magic to other clans, or... Oh. I stumbled into a village, starving and cold a few weeks later. I started using magic to scare predators away. The villagers saw me make fire in my fist. They were terrified and wanted to kill me. Templars saved me from them. They gave me food and clothes and took me to the circle. I've seen what life is like without the Templars, and I want no part of it. I just want to study. Um, I wonder what was after that ore there, Selene. You said that you were keeping some of the Tranquil safe. Yes. The mages took some of them when my circle rebelled. The rest were forgotten. Most circle mages look down on the Tranquil, or try to pretend they don't exist. They don't have any emotions. They can barely take care of themselves. Can't defend themselves at all. It's a shame. I like them better than most people. I'm glad they have someone who cares about them. They deserve better. They're polite, they're rational, and they'll never get angry at you. When they study, they have a focus no normal person could ever match. But the Templars, even some of the mages, mistreated them just because they could. The Tranquil never fought back. If not for that, I... I don't know. Doesn't really matter now. You said Cassandra has you researching creatures. Yes. If you find anything interesting in your travels, I'd appreciate you bringing it to me. I may be able to find some weakness our soldiers can exploit when fighting various creatures. At the least, some materials are useful for making potions or gear for the Inquisition. Why did you decide to research dangerous creatures? I like the outdoors. The idea of the outdoors, anyway. When some monster is coming at you, glowing eyes and burning claws, it's terrifying. But once you know how it works, you can deal with it. It's just another part of the world. So much of this world is only frightening because we don't understand it. I found something the demons left behind. Can you use it? Yes, that's very helpful. Just leave it there and the Tranquil and I will examine it. Okay. Yes. Good. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Uh, operations, you have now access to missions. Missions, operations take time and bring inquisition resources and rewards. Only one mission per advisors can be activated at the time. Some misses have preferred type, which results in less time required. And it, I have a mod on that doesn't take me any time. So... That was pointless to read. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Clan Lavinia offered Have you greetings. Have any trouble with them? Not at all. I will inform you if that changes. To the Inquisition and wishes it well in sealing the breach that has opened in the sky. While some Dalish clan hate humans and wish nothing to do with them, Clan Lavellin has always dealt fair with all and wishes only for peace. That said, we have on occasion been forced to defend ourselves from those who saw only as potential victims. It has come to our attention that a member of our clan is being held captive by your inquisition. She went to the conclave only to observe the peace talks between your mages and templars. And if we find and we find it highly unlikely that she intentionally violated your customs. If she has been charged with a crime, we would appreciate hearing of it. If not, it would ease our concern to hear from her to know that she remains with the Inquisition of her own own will. We wait your reply, Keeper Levelon. I'm not even going to try saying that. 
Uh, the Dalish respects deeds, not words. Let my elven agents deliver something the clan needs as a show of good faith. Your people must be approached carefully. One of our elven scribes could deliver a message and share the news of the Inquisition's fair treatment. Let's do this one. Let us begin. Um, Dalen. Andrian. Uh, Adron. Oh, Atishan. I can't say it. Oh, my Elvish is poor. <laughs> oh, brutal. Sorry. Um, it does my heart well to hear that you are safe. Our clan was visited by members of the Inquisition who spoke persuasively of the good work you are doing, as well as the fairness with which our kind has been treated by the Inquisition itself. You know that the clan Lavalian has a little by way of gold, but I give this messengers some of our healing herbs, as Silas blesses us with abundance in our recent foraging. We will, we would be a distraction if we came to the Inquisition itself. Our hunters argue with the humans as they so easily do. Nevertheless, if you need aid, send word and we are with you. Darden Shal, Keeper Letha, Leveland. Blah, 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 blah. Horrible, Renee. Horrible. All right. Uh, Harold, your inquisition says it's for order against chaos, reasons in the darkness. If you stand by this, come forth and drive the herricks from my land. They claim to be refugees, but I've seen elves and apostates among them, filthy savages tearing at our roots. Our monarchs refuse to send forth armies and my own knights were decimated at the conclave. I require your aid to return peace to my lands. Prove your loyalty, and I will see you richly rewarded for your faith. Praise the light, Lord Kindred of Ferelden, you sound like an ass. Every time I read that, it, he sounds more and more. And I love Colin for this, and we're going to show you why. We we could send a few patrols, but I would prefer they help the refugees and not this lord. All yes, right. please. Commander Cullen, am I to understand you are in charge of the soldiers trampling on my lawns, providing food and ref refuge to the scribbling of filth burying into my lands? A plague on you, sir, for your spitting in the face of the honest petitioner for taking advantage of my distress. Did my wretched neighbor, Ban Triff, whisper your, in your ear? Tell me what he paid you so that I may at least know the price of treachery, sir. My only consolation is that a few of the rank and file have gone to join your farce in Inquisition. A bitterness discuss, Lord Kidgren. To whom it concerns, the Deventer of High Ever wishes to convey our deepest sympathy on the death of Divine Justina V. The Most Holy was an incomparable in her wisdom and dedication to peace, and we had high hopes that her concave would succeed. We will hold a vigil in High Ever in remembrance of Justina and accordingly invite the Inquisition to attend. Sincerely, Tanfir's Kuzlan. Hello, brother, from my other playthrough. We should send diplomats. I know the Tan Kuzlan and I knew Justina. I can't attend. Um, we have a number of Ferelden officers who would send an honor guard. Yes, do that. Commander Colin, your honor guard was a welcome sight at the Divine's Vigil. As a measure of thanks, I'm setting up for our elven arms and equipment for your troops. Sincerely, Tan Fergus Cruzlin. Ruffles, I need a flavor. Actually, let's call it a loan since I will pay it back. I got a letter from my editor in Kirkwall today. She tells me that hard in Hightown 3, the repunching appeared in print from an Antivan printer a couple weeks ago. I'll give you a moment to contemplate the horror that is that title. 
I had my contacts in the Merchant Guild look for the Arthur a couple years back, the best that they could find out after spending a couple of hundred gold was that Perel Belleforth is a pen name. I could have told them that for free. You got contacts with the uh, Antivan Print House. Maybe you could find out more than the guild of Varric. I asked a friend in the Antivan to look in this matter, I suppose. You don't sound overly thrilled about that. If this Arthur has invaded the Merchant's Guild, guild the Crows might be better choice for investigating him. Let's see what yes, we please. have. My dear Liliana, your Arthur friend is truly a mystery. Our search uncovered only a string of foreign accounts. The trail of coin led from Antiva to Deventer to the Free Marches and Olay. Someone hid their tracks well, but not well enough. Your rider is in Kirkwall. And remember, you owe me a favor, eh? worried about this one. All right guys, let's do it. The remaining Chantry clerics have declared the Inquisition heretical. Attempting to gather allies against the breach have been rebuffled. And this moment we could not step forth into the capital without being attacked by mobs or arrested. We must convince the Chantry to permit entry into the city so we can show them that the Herald of Andraste is not a monster they believe. Slut. Having the Herald address the clerics is not a terrible idea. You can't be serious. Oh, we're serious. Mother Giselle isn't wrong. At the moment, the Chantry's only strength is that they are united in opinion. And we should ignore the danger to the Herald. Let's ask her. I'm more concerned this won't actually solve any problems. I agree. It just lends credence to the idea that we should care what the Chantry says. I will go with her. Mother Giselle said she could provide us names. Use them. But why? This is nothing but a... What choice do we have, Liliana? Right now we can't approach anyone for help with the breach. Use what influence we have to call the clerics together. Once they are ready, we will see this through. <clears throat> Address the Chantry in Val Rayol. The remaining Chantry clerics have declared the Inquisition heretical, attempting to gather allies against the breach have been rebuffled. Uh, we already read this. Let's go. My crew. The city still mourns. Just a guess, Seeker, but I think they all know who we are. Your skills of observation never fail to impress me, <laughs> Beric. <laughs> my Lady Herald! You're one of Leliana's people. What have you found? The Chantry Mothers await you, but so do a great many Templars. There are Templars here? People seem to think the Templars will protect them from... from the Inquisition. They're gathering on the other side of the market. I think that's where the Templars intend to meet you. Only one thing to do, then. They wish to protect the people from us? Protect them from the blasphemous Herald of Andraste, I'd say. Surely they cannot think such a thing. Why not? They wouldn't be the only ones. You think the Order's return to the Fold, maybe? To deal with us upstarts? I know Lord Seeker Lucius. I can't imagine him coming to the Chantry's defense. Not after all that's occurred. 
Return to Haven. Someone will need to inform them if we are delayed. As you say, my lady. Alright. Creatures. Archers. To fight an enemy with bow and crossbow is simple, although not always easy. A guard with a crossbow must be cranked his weapons after each shot. If there is only such an enemy, seek cover and give him cause to waste his shot, and then close upon him before he may fire again. If there are many, close to the rank their flanks so that you can face one guard directly using him as a second shield and no other guard has a clean shot at your unprotected back do not move to the middle of the ranks and rely upon them hesitantly to risk hitting one another a soldier with a short bow is a little more dangerous attacking him as you would an enemy with a crossbow but except that he will likely fire again approach with your shield up even if you must sacrifice speed few soldiers are true masters of the bow and those who do not fumble their drawn in fear with fire a shot quickly so much more likely to glance off your armor or your shield than punch through few soldiers have the skills or strength to make good use of longbows respect those who do against such an enemy recovering the only defense move quickly across this field of vision forcing him to contemplate contemplate concentrate for your movements do not charge directly unless your ally can distract him a fully drawn longbow can drive an arrow through a chavez plate at a hundred yards a fight between an archer and a chavez is a test of cunning versus patience we are too often patient heavily armored as we are and faced with light armored foes who harass us while archers frustrate me as they do most of valleys, uh, it is good that we fight them so we remember how to be cunning, how to break an opponent's patience, an expert from meditation upon use of blades. Okay, looks like the only one. Valrayu, uh, roll whatever five roll valor roll any resident a royal will say it is the greatest city in the world many take such pride for the arrogance but they do so through smiles as they nod in agreement for such is the cost of doing business in the capital by roll is every way a world leader in commerce culture and its own exaggerated beauty the site was founded during ever grand unification the result of mix of influence not so much balance as driven together and while such an allegation would be cause for chaos elsewhere the prosperity of the region has enabled an upward spiral of indulgence the capital has in endured the ages to become a beacon of civilization and its city uh, and the citizens the measure of modernity just ask them an element of viral is not notoriously risque and it is exists harmlessly beside the autocracy autocratic and the palace bureaucrats indeed the autocratic Artistry tends to indulge in the city's darker side quite frequently, if discreetly, and the only adds to the mystique. Nobility elsewhere tends to be much more conservative and concerned about their reputation, even if a tripe into the capital to indulge a few private pleasure is not completely out of the question. In Vibaro, transgressions are suffered and for forgiven with fibonent urgencies. That is not to say that the city is without lasting scandal or hardship, but one must squint past the g gliding to be allowed even a glimpse as royans are very careful about the face they present such as in 
with the mask of nobility and the underbelly of their streets. Excerpt from Valrayol, Excesses, Grands, and Otherwise by formerly Sister Ludun. And we're not reading these. Okay, let's see here. Let's read these. The Avenue of Air reflected thoughts inscribed upon a plague. Our Lady and the actor of her rises and falls. Her message and visage are worth repeating. Mastera through Morse beneath scratches by a Venadol, a meeting at the low door frame. Madara's blood glot beneath scratches by Venadol and his head suddenly weighed too much. I love that. Are oh, you going to see many of those? Madara's regret beneath scratch by Venadol about his unfortunate hair. Same statue. Martha pretends beneath scratched by a vent at all, an unrelated headache. Again, same statue. <sighs> the avenues of her reflection thought. The avenues is inspirational, but wise travelers do not linger in their respects. Not just because the bazaar awaits, but because the area before the black turned statue is treacherous. Local legend has it that the child empire Amy abused the opportunity of religious repose to relieve herself beneath the gaze of Our Lady. Unable to discipline the tolerating leader, her attendants instead chastened the statues and had them turn in supposed embarrassment. True or not, foolish youths dare each other to solve saw the spot in similar fashion and a place of otherwise reverent thoughts always carry a faint order about it. They're sort of torn from a disposable walking tour of the capital by Fomen a bard. That's so funny <laughs> and interesting. Stand wary, guardsman. The Inquisition is here. Along with the Herald of Andraste. They say they found the knife here covered with the Divine's blood. Let her pass. The Inquisition is the Templar's problem, and they'll fix it. Excuse me, which one said knife ear? I'd like to punch you. Maybe stab you in the back. Put an arrow in your hand, look. <laughs> Good people of Val Royal, hear me. Together, we mourn our divine. A naive and beautiful heart silenced by treachery. You wonder what will become of a murderer. Well, wonder no more. <sighs> I Behold, so the so-called Herald of Andraste, claiming to rise where our beloved fell. We say this is a false prophet. The Maker would say no elf in our hour of need. Uh, it's alright to have religion, but when you discriminate through every else and force people to believe in something that they don't and even if there's um, some amount of truth in anything of it you can't force people to believe and you can't forcibly you know discriminate different people who don't or be so biased we have a real enemy you say I am the enemy the breach in the sky is our true enemy. We must unite to stop it. It's true. 
The Inquisition seeks only to end this madness before it is too late. It is already too late. The Templars have returned to the Chantry. They will face this Inquisition and the people will be safe once more. Uh, that was unnecessary. Still yourself. She is beneath us. What's the meaning of this? Her claim to authority is an insult, much like your own. Lord Seeker Lucius, it's imperative that we speak with... You will not address me. Lord Seeker? Creating a heretical movement. Raising up a puppet as Andraste's prophet, you should be ashamed. You should all be ashamed. The Templars failed no one when they left the Chantry to purge the mages. You are the ones who have failed. You who'd leash our righteous swords with doubt and fear. If you came to appeal to the Chantry, you are too late. The only destiny here that demands respect is mine. Okay, so a little bit here. Um, you do know um, kind of where I'm heading with this, but if you um, have not done the chant, uh, Templars mission or whatnot, uh, I would definitely recommend um, looking into it or just kind of watching. Um, uh, basically, and also reading some of the books, again, I'll, I'll go back to the books all the time. They're lovely and they are codex filled um to understand that this templar or seeker was a very good templar at one point but um if you did play the templar areas you know that spiral alert there was a demon who uh, possessed him and um, because of that possession he's turned everything and everybody um, into believe in a certain way or thinking that you know the mages are a real threat and this is why there's no peace between any of it um, also kind of keep a mind too because they feed Templars the bread lyrium and you'll see it here early on um, when the one Templar comes up look into his eyes and you'll you'll see it already started templars one of your own commands the inquisition's forces join us as he did <laughs> a staunch and loyal member of the order so loyal he abandoned them for a false herald but lord seeker what if she really was sent by the maker what if you are called to a higher okay. purpose do not question I will make the Templar Order a power that stands alone against the Void. We deserve recognition. Independence. You have shown me nothing. He's and the, the only one that doesn't really have all the red. Less than nothing. You can see Templars. In their eyes. Val Royo She's is not unworthy bad. of our protection. We march. Charming fellow, isn't he? Has Lord Seeker Lucius gone mad? My philosophy is also too that um, they came to take the remaining Templars, so not all of them had that eyes. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just per speculation in my part, but... Do you know him very well? He took over the Seekers of Truth two years ago, after Lord Seeker Lambert's death. He was always a decent man. Never given to ambition and grandstanding. This is very bizarre. Do you think he can be reasoned with? I hope so. If not him, there are surely others in the Order who don't feel as he does. Either way, we should first return to Haven and inform the others. Okay, so let's go to characters here. Okay, so Lord Seeker Lucian Corden. For months, 
We are all certain that Lord Seeker Lambertsdale was an association carried out by mages. He had, after all, declared Navarian accord null and void, hurtling us headlong into a war against the rebels. Why else would he be killed, except as an act of retribution? The entire Templar order was fired up, ready to take up against or fight against the mages, something we were sure we would be a over in a matter of weeks. Thus the election of Lucas Corrin to the role made me despair. According to the few seekers of truth with whom I spoke, he was a moderate. He agreed to the divine's conclave and every Templar I knew felt certain that he would compromise to see the war ended. And again, on why, um, it's so important to play the other one as well too but lately the man seems different does he not i've never met him before he assumed command but even in the short time his opinion of the war have turned he did not go to the conclave he personally supported in fact he seems to regret supporting it at all he talks of the templars establishing themselves as a power in our own right and our fellows are all too eager to listen. I don't know from where this change of heart came, but I began to wonder if Lambert's death wasn't as simple a matter of as we seem. Something is amiss within our order, and all I know is that it's beyond me to discover that. From a letter written by an unknown Templar found in a burnout fort, 941 Dragon. The Summer Bazaar We re dedicated the Jewel of Viral as the Summer Bazaar of the First Lion. To reflect the spirit of Reno that is the heart of the capital and of our people, let strength of our four always guard the grace of the empire, let the blossoms and promise of changing seasons be a tribute to trade and public gathering. For here in the name of the Lion Vermont, uh, we will be an example to the world of how Orlesian responds to adversary. Our w ways cannot be threatened, for it embodies the truth of tradition and the promise of progression. The blight finds no purchase in the heart of commerce. A plague of dedication that the summer bazaar for victorious earned and to come placed in 530 exalted okay all right guys this is where we're gonna save and i do have to work and i would like this to um go ahead and um be uploaded today um we have a lot to do here and most of it's going to contain codexes um and so that is just going to take an episode on itself so um until next time we'll see you guys later bye